Welcome to A Course in Business Miracles. This is Heather Dominic, creator of businessmiracles.com and founder and leader of the highly sensitive entrepreneur movement. Join me today for some genuine practical assistance and a business altering and life changing experience. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles, episode number 22, Your Financial Flow Energy, part two of two. Listen in here for the final part two in our series of learning how to focus on shifting your energy from frustration to financial flow. I recently read a portion of A Course in Miracles that I just love. And what it says is that the ego's mantra is seek and do not find. Where spirit's credence is seek and you shall find. So I love the idea of the ego's mantra being seek and do not find. I really see that that says it all. And that is frustration. I'm doing, 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 and it's not happening. I'm doing, 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 and it's not happening fast enough. So again, the way to disengage from the disconnect, from the denial, is to be willing to look at what is really beneath the frustration for you. I know as I connect in with each of you privately, that when we're able to really get to the core of something that's frustrating you, there's either one of three standard situations that presents themselves. Situation number one is that you're frustrated but you're not yet able to be really willing to look at what's happening beneath that frustration. And that shows itself in resistance. Yeah, buts. So we're coaching through a frustration and I might begin to peel back that surface layer and begin to explore possibilities for relief of the frustration and the possibilities are immediately met with resistance. Yeah, but. And You share all of the reasons why, or as you know, I like to say, unreasonable reasons, why those possibilities are not possible. And that, in that moment, is a fierce act of clinging to a limiting belief or beliefs. The insistence of all of the reasons why, all of the unreasonable reasons why, the possibility is not possible. I would never be able to do that because you just don't understand. Situation number two is we're able to move through some of the resistance 
And when we move through the resistance and we're able to really be honest and energetically responsible, then there is a moment of acknowledgement that the depth to which you could be taking alternative action is not being met. That depth is not being met. The depth with which you could be taking alternative action is not being met. We really get honest and energetically responsible. There's often a moment of, again, recognition and acknowledgement. You know what? Uh, I, I'm not going to networking events every week. You know what? I'm not willing to go to more than one networking event a day. I'm not being consistent with my newsletter. I'm not willing to have that conversation with my team member. I'm not willing to let go of my approach to wanting to recreate new offers. I'm not willing to uh, just give attention and energy to my largest lump. I'm not willing to, you know, put my business as a priority fully throughout my day. I'm not willing to send that other email. I'm not willing to pick up the phone. I'm not willing to call that person back. I'm not willing to let go of my insistent judgment that that potential client is a jerk (laughs) or whatever it might be. And then the third situation, which honestly is is really, truly the best, is full-out breakdown. The frustration has gotten so, so immense that there are tears, There's swearing and there's a down on your knees moment. And usually words that sound something like, I will do whatever it takes not to feel this way anymore. Now, the ideal, the evolution is that we don't have to get down on our knees every time that we're ready for a change. But when it comes to frustration, out of those three situations, number three really is the best. Because that means that the pain has gotten so bad that you are finally ready and willing to do something differently. To really change the way that you're approaching your business tasks, to change the way that you're approaching your marketing, to change the way that you're approaching your selling, to change the way that you're approaching your team, There is no level of tolerance left. One of the things that I appreciate that Marianne Williamson shares from early, early on in my trainings with her is that she shares a personal story of being brought to her knees. And as part of that story, then she also shares that she heard a voice Spirit, God, Jesus, whatever language speaks to you. And the voice said, now that you're down here, why don't you just stay? And I remember when I first heard that, I was horrified. Because at that time in my life, 
every single ounce of energy and being that I had throughout pretty much every single second of every single day was unconsciously invested in not falling apart. I was doing everything I had within my power and within my being to keep it together because I really thought and I really believed that if I fell apart, no one would be there to help pick me up. So when Marianne Williamson said that, I just thought that was like the most horrible thing that I had ever heard. What? To constantly be on your knees? Because I equated that with being weak, with falling apart, being alone, being exposed, being in full out, found out shame. What I've come to learn and to understand is that what Marianne was and still does teach was that rather than continuing to have these breakdowns and then go back to just the old way of behaving until it break down again, the frustration gets so big, and that in that breakdown of the, I will do whatever it takes not to feel this way anymore, that really what that is ultimately is a surrender. To stop playing the game and the charade of the surface dance. To truly acknowledge, recognize the bigger energy beneath and to be willing to surrender, let go, and ask for help. And Gay Hendricks would refer to frustration and the surface energy as upper limiting. Because again, frustration is easy. So most likely, what's the energy that you're going to feel when you bump up against your upper limit? Frustration. Because that's an easy pinball back. That's an easy go in a different direction. Like I said, with the boy on the bicycle, less than three friggin' seconds. Whoa. What's going on there, Heather? So this is why I say frustration is a great opportunity. I now know in my better (laughs) moments, unlike (laughs) the moment on the sidewalk, although I caught myself pretty much just as quickly. I would say the whole thing, including laughing at myself, took about 30 seconds. But I've really come to more and more easily and quickly be able to recognize that when I feel frustrated in my business, I am being given an immediate directive from the universe and an opportunity to look more closely, what's going on here? What do I have the opportunity to see that I haven't been willing to see? And how am I being asked to stretch, to grow, to expand, and to change? And just as Gay Hendricks talks about in The Big Leap, is usually we don't want to see what's on the other side. Oh, excuse me. It's not, he doesn't really say on the other side of the upper limit because on the other side of the upper limit is freedom. But we don't want to see 
what the bridge is that's going to bring us to that other side. Because it's going to be something that most likely we've been avoiding, we've been disconnected from, we've been in denial about. And I will tell you, every single time I am willing to look frustration in the face, like coming eye to eye with a dragon is often what it feels like. I'm willing to look right in the eyes of that dragon. Usually turns into puff. (laughs) As in puff the magic dragon. As in blowing a whole lot of smoke. But not really as scary as I thought it was going to be. And I am always, always, always better for it. And often when I'm right in the midst of it, from the outside, it can look like utter chaos. And I know for myself, one of the things that I have had to learn how to manage and I'm still learning how to manage is how to move through those moments of facing that frustration dragon, seeing what it is that I meant to see, making the changes that I meant to make in the face of working with a team. I have to be willing to endure the possibility that it might look like or be perceived as or I might be judged as not having it all together, not being perfect. But that is part of the beneath frustration for me that I have had to become clearer about beneath the anger, beneath the hurt, beneath the fear to the shame as my two primary upper limits are a fabulously fun combination of being found out a fraud, and possibly shining too brightly. That's a hard do-si-do to do. And it's a do-si-do I'm not interested in anymore. So now, when I feel the frustration, I go, oh, mm, change is afoot. Oh, mm, it most likely ain't going to be pretty. Oh, mm, can I survive being imperfect? Wait, no, really what I mean is being seen as imperfect. Oh, yeah, yep, I can because I've done it before. Okay, cool. Let's go, dragon. What's on the other side? So my hide invitation for you at this truly potent and powerful time of year is you begin by looking back at where you've traveled so far since January. And most importantly, What currently has you frustrated? And I would recommend that you make a list, a frustration list, similar to an annoyance list, 
So it might be things that are on your A2A list, but it might not because you maybe haven't even been willing to acknowledge that they could even fall into the category of possibility of transformation. So you don't even want to say that they're annoyances. They're just living in the limbo land of frustration or maybe some overlap. After you make this list, circle the top three. Looking at the top three, choose the top one. And with this top frustration, be willing to have some truly deep personal and reflective time. And how are you really feeling here? Are you angry? Are you hurt? Are you afraid? And what possibly are you ashamed about? And continue to breathe. Be kind to yourself. Have a nice cup of tea with you. Maybe take breaks. And then say, what could be a possibility here that I'm not currently seeing? And it might be helpful to pose that question to someone or something, whether that's spirit or source or a goddess or an ascended master or whatever higher source energy is available for you, to you. Stay open. Listen for the answer. And as you receive the answer, watch yourself. Witness. No right, no wrong, no judgment. Just watch and witness. Do you respond to your inner coach with situation number one? Yeah, but. Come up with all the unreasonable reasons why it's not possible. Do you respond to your inner coach with situation number two? Which is an acknowledgement, being energetically and personally responsible and acknowledging, yeah, I could do that, but I'm not willing to. Or do you respond to your inner coach with situation number three? Down on your knees, willing to do whatever it takes to not have to feel this way anymore. If you're at situation two or three, that at least will bring you some relief because you're willing to not have the frustration just be about the outside, but you're willing to own it and go a bit deeper. And as I said earlier in the call, that is ultimate freedom. Because then you have the opportunity to create. And what is the in the palm of your hand golden opportunity as an entrepreneur? As that when something isn't going the way that we want it to, 
we have full freedom to create it otherwise. The best counteractive energy to frustration is creation. But the more you dance with frustration, the more you get to stay in that ego mind state of comfortable misery. Not miserable enough to be down on your knees, but just miserable enough to be stuck. And that is why frustration is immediately available to be transformed into financial flow. Like I said, now when I feel it, I go, oh, change is afoot. And this is good. powerful time of year, my friends. Tap into the prosperous, luscious energy. Channel it into your business. Thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Course in Business Miracles. If you're ready to learn how to use your highly sensitive abilities to support you in being purposeful, profitable, and empowered rather than scattered, poor, and undervalued, take my free self quiz to find out if you are indeed a highly sensitive entrepreneur. And if you are, along with your quiz results, you'll receive my free HSE success guide, which will teach you how to have your highly sensitive abilities working for you to create the results you desire in your business. Take the quiz and receive your free success guide now at www.hsequiz.com.